Hey everyone, okay, so welcome to Dortmund, Germany at the ADAC Sim Expo 2024. So I'm here on the second day Saturday and you know, I was here Friday for the whole day pretty much and got a good lay of the land, what's here, just kind of really taking everything in. But uh, this morning I'm gonna try to attempt a full walking tour of everything here. Uh, I'm gonna try to show you everything and we're gonna kind of fly through some of the booths. I'm gonna highlight some things that certain booths maybe take longer. I'm gonna see how this goes. I have no idea how the audio is gonna work out after this, but uh, we're gonna make this attempt. Um, I think it'd be cool to kind of give you the experience of what it's like to be here walking through each aisle and seeing all the different booths. It's quite busy on Saturday. They were telling me today it's like record attendance right now. There was a huge queue or lineup to get in here this morning. Uh, but I had a chance to meet some other creators and stuff and yeah, so really excited. So let's do this walking tour. We're gonna walk through this pretty quickly. I'm gonna go up and down the aisles and just kind of show you what's here. Okay, so as soon as you come in here, this is the entrance in here. And then you have the ADAC uh, Sim Expo booth. So this is kind of, they've been doing events and tournaments here and it's quite busy, but they've got some really crazy uh, full motion rigs here, as you can see. And this is the information desk here for ADAC. So on the right here, you have 3D wrap sim racing. So these guys do a lot of different uh, accessories. We've got wind kits here. You've got uh, quick releases as well. Some really cool 3D printed accessories for uh, mounting things to your rig. See some uh, DDUs here as well. So we'll keep going. This is just the first aisle. So we've got uh, Asolith or Asolith Sim Racing from Italy. Daniel Killian, if you're watching, this is, I know this is the wheel, that, uh, the wheel here that you recently reviewed, but they've got all their DDUs. They've got rigs set up here. Got a Nissan GTR, R34. I'm not sure who these guys are. Grip, Das Motor Vent. I think they might be like a, a team here or import team drifting. So I'll show you Acelift Sim Racing here. It's gonna be a little busy here, guys, so I apologize for the camera work, but just kind of navigating around the crowds. So look, that looks like Daniel Killian's wheel. The Ace Lift, here's the new uh, wheel here with the display. Got some wheel rims here. What's up, man? Say hello. <laughs> You're on the sim racing den. <laughs> I'm saying hi from Daniel Killian. Oh. Daniel Killian is one of the moderators on my Facebook group, Sim Racing Setups. He loves your wheels. <laughs> Thank you. We're doing a tour. Some nice gloves here. Okay, we're gonna go on to the next one. Like I said, guys, I'm moving kind of quick. You know, I'm depending on when this video comes out, I may have some more in-depth videos before or after, but like I said, this is a quick raw tour, very uh, live, very unscripted. In your room. Okay, we've got uh, Gravidec motion systems. So this is like a motion system here. Not sure exactly what this does. Oh, here, let me show you the video. On the right. Oh my God, it's like a hovercraft. It's like basically just floating around. I gotta try this. I haven't even tried this yet. That looks crazy. We're gonna have to come back here. Any question? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to come back here. Okay. What's that? Oh, you're. Yeah, I'm the founder. I'm the engineer. Oh, you're the engineer. Okay, this is the engineer. What's your name? <laughs> Sammy. Sammy, tell us about the Gravidec. Oh yes, that's a new kind of motion system because in contrast to what. Hold on, let me move the mic. Yes. It... Here, talking here. Oh sorry. Yeah, sorry. It can really move. It can uh, surge front and back. It can sway. Uh, left and right, you can have mo yaw motion. Yep. Wow. And uh, you really feel G forces, you know, no tricks. Because when you hit the, the brake pedal, you, you need a, some workspace. You have a workspace of two meters by two meters. And when you hit the brake pedal. So two meters around. Because yes. this thing's, mo it looks like it's moving like all over the place. Yeah. 
it, but it doesn't go too far. No, not too far because it has a workspace that is, uh, uh, you know, there is the, the surveillance or the other side of two base stations that know exactly where the platform is. Oh, okay. Any single aspect. So like a sensor. Absolutely. It knows its position and orientation. So you cannot go outside the boundaries of the of the workspace. Okay, okay. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna come back and try it later. I, I hope, I hope. <laughs> okay, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Sammy. That's crazy, guys. That I mean, this is a sim racing expo. You see stuff that uh, you see stuff you just never expect to uh, to see, right? Like, I never saw thought I'd see a gravity floating um, sim racing motion rig. So we've got here the uh, racing hub, which is like um, basically you know kind of like a training telemetry uh, AI training tool. So I understand the way I understand this is that it's um, it's giving you coaching as you're as you're racing. Uh, I believe it's giving you live like you know as you're going through the corners and you can leverage all those insights. So we're seeing a lot more of these um, types of software popping up, but this is, uh, it's pretty cool. I, you know, I need to spend some more time with some of those types of things. Best test. So we got another, uh, we're seeing a lot of these custom motion rigs. This looks like, uh, Vog Vognarf? I'm not sure how to I'm not sure how to pronounce that name, but look, look at this rig. Full motion, like we're all custom, enclosed wheelbase. This thing looks really nice, and I like the black and the red. I'm gonna you're gonna see more rigs like this, and of course everybody knows BDH, BDH race sim with their shifters. These are probably the most, you know, realistic shifters you can get. BDH. What's up, BDH? Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing. <laughs> good, good. Good to meet you. Mike from Sim Racing Den. We're just doing. I'm. I'm doing a quick. Uh, I'm doing a full tour. All right. Oh, brilliant. We're gonna try. Hopefully, I don't run out of battery. <laughs> yeah, I tried to do it yesterday, but I just got pulled in too many directions. So now I know where everything is. I can kind of move through here more quickly, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You guys want to? Mention anything about the shifters? Uh, oh, who wants to go? What's so? Give us a quick rundown for the people that don't know. So this is our H1SQ. It's a H pattern uh, shifter and also sequential. So we're currently in sequential mode. Yeah. So we've got, that, got a bit of tension on here. Yeah. Flick of the collar and you're straight into H. Wow. Um, and we go across to. So there's eight gates, so you've got your six speed and two which can be configured for reverse. And then we can adjust the tension up to get it just how you want it. Wow, that's nice. So it's plug and play, straight in, no problems. Wow. It's a heavy duty, it's all mechanical. Um, we've got magnetic hall sensors, so there's no micro switches to worry about. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a tough, tough shifter. There's nothing else like it. Everybody has said they've not felt anything like this. I know. Based around the the, Mark, uh, the MX-5 gearbox, so you got that short throw, nice feel. So yeah, come and try it. Yeah, I gotta try it. <laughs> wow. That really feels like a real shifter. <laughs> How a shifter should feel. That's no Fanatec shifter. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like it's it's expensive, guys, but it's one of those things that you know these things are worth it, in my opinion. If you if you do a lot of manual sh if you do a lot of manual shifting, like uh, this is like you want this on your rig, right? I mean, yeah, cool. Excellent. Thank you. Glad you like it. Yeah, I'll be back. Be back later. See you, again. See you guys. BDH guys, really nice guys. So here we got uh, race motion. Look at this setup here, guys. You want to talk about immersion. When you go in here, you've got full wraparound, full wraparound projector. See if I can get some video of this in motion. 
But this is the, um, this is like the uh, chassis that's in there. Look at this thing. This looks like it's ready to go racing. It's full roll cage almost. I don't even know what that is there. Looks like a seatbelt tensioning system, subwoofer, you got a spoiler. Looks like they're uh, maybe just trying to get it, get it going today. But yeah, we'll come back. That's pretty crazy. We got uh, simrig.se. So I guess this is a, uh, yeah, it looks like a chassis maker motion system. Yeah, it looks really cool. It looks more, you know, this looks more like, um, not as much as an exaggerated motion, more just like a suspension system. It looks like there's probably haptics on here too, but you can see how subtle the movement is on there, just kind of feeling that suspension. That looks really nice. I need to definitely try this. Uh, let's look at the other rig here. <clears throat> so this is the other rig here. Slightly, you know, bigger rig. Uh, with full, full widescreen monitor on here. That looks really nice. That looks, you know, that looks like a motion system. Uh, I would enjoy that. So I'm going to have to give that a try. Okay, so we're going to keep moving down this aisle here. Got uh, some great places to eat lunch and stuff here. There's a couple kind of like food truck style uh, stuff set up. So we're going, this is basically going all the way back to the uh, rear of the, the hall here. Uh, this is pretty cool. I saw this yesterday. This is a, uh, looks like it's a Peugeot rally car, but they've actually got a sim in there. So you can see like this is inside of the sim rig here. That's cool. I mean, I've seen a lot of these types of things before, but this one is like probably one of the craziest ones I've seen. Like you're fully immersed when you're in there. That's incredible. Looks like they've got uh, some rigs here set up as well. This is SRP, so SRP uh, pedals. And handbrakes, they've all got uh, hydraulic systems on them as well. Okay, moving along. Got some uh, energy drinks here, energy stuff. Just got a uh, Mercedes AMG GT3 car. Look at that. It's amazing. So this is Sensit. So it looks like it's a haptic system. <laughs> so much stuff here guys i believe this is like a haptic seat so basically what they've done is they've uh embedded some haptics into the actual seat so instead of like a seat add let's say you add the haptics are all built into the seat so that's that's really cool i really like that okay back here this is at the very like back of the hall i guess from the entrance the furthest point here you've got some insane high-end type, you know, almost commercial grade type setups, where you've got full F1 style cockpits. Um, let me just film here. So you've got, like, look at this. Looks like an Aston Martin. Look at the wheel in there. Carbon fiber. It's just... That's crazy, guys. Like, I mean, this is something you probably could buy for your home. I would probably imagine this would be more of a commercial setup, but yeah, if you've got unlimited budget and space, maybe you can put one of these in your, in your home. But I like how the monitors are down low to give you that really immersive setup. And we've got, they've got another one over here too. It looks like just, uh, looks like the same thing, uh, just a different color. So it's got full, you know, motion system going on here too. That's cool. Like this is be the this would be the ultimate F1 setup. 
Now over here, this was a really big surprise. This is the Pagani uh, sim racing setup. I'm sure you've seen this on social media somewhere. Uh, this thing is like insanely expensive, but basically like here's the real Pagani. Uh, they fired this thing up yesterday and I like it's almost like they were trying to compete with Asetek's uh, race car because every once in a while they fire up the Asetek race car and it's so freaking loud. But this thing, they fired this thing up and I hope they do it today. They probably will. The sound is unbelievable. You can hear it all the way from the entrance. It is just insanely loud. And so this sim racing setup, from what I was told and from what I understand, this was built specifically for a Pagani customer so that uh, they were able to, you know, try out the experience of driving a Pagani before they got their car. So it was a one-off commission setup. And I guess, I don't know, they brought it here. Like, like I said, this is just what I understand what I've heard. Uh, I can't confirm that or not, but um, that it makes sense to me, that story. But I mean, it's got, you know, a lot of uh, crazy stuff on here. Um, got some Pagani like pedals. They're, they're not the, I don't think they're the Asetek Pagani pedals. They look like sort of a custom pedal set with uh, hydraulics or something. I'm not sure, but yeah, this is like probably one of the most beautiful looking sim rigs I've ever seen. Like, look at the carbon fiber weave. Like, look at the monitor stand and the speakers alone. Like, come on. Like, that's just wild. All right, we're moving on to the next uh, row here. This is the main stage here, but just behind here, you've got, uh, this is like an esports area. So it's like a stadium style uh, seating and they've been doing competitions here, tournaments. There's a lot of finals going on here. There's people uh, even back home uh, doing the races from their home, but they have rigs set up here as well. Um, they were running a lot of races and doing like live commentary and stuff here, but they're, they're basically Fanatec rigs. It looks like there's DD1s or DD2s on here. Uh, with V3 pedals, so yeah, that's the esports sort of arena. And then uh, behind here we got Hyundai. So this is actually part of the Hyundai uh, booth. So Hyundai's got a couple of uh, cars here, and, and uh, so they've got their uh, race car here. So they've got a whole, you know, merch shop here. They're, you know, look at all the end performance parts here, and they're basically um, hosting this Hyundai N Virtual Cup here. Uh, as you can see behind there, so that's really cool. Okay, what's next? Oh, we got Fanatec. We got Fanatec next. So, you know, crazy year for Fanatec, but they're here with a huge presence, huge area. I think they might have one of the biggest, I'm pretty sure they have the biggest booth. I actually think they have the biggest booth here. Um, but just, you know, they're all powered by Corsair computers now, which makes a lot of sense. Got some PlayStation setups here. Uh, we've got some desk setups here as well. So they've got a really big exhibit here. They've got this little retro gaming section. There's a Nintendo SE look over there. And they got lots of gear here. Like this is like a, I think this was the Corsair rig before. Uh, and now they've got it like kind of labeled Fanatec, but you've got like all Corsair computer parts. So this is like a, Pretty cool full rig with Corsair monitors. I like the white actually. I really like the white. It's a nice change from the uh, from the black. So here you got another Corsair setup. This looks like a like a streaming setup. So they've got all the Elgato stuff on here, um, Elg Elgato key lights. So like this would be a pretty cool streaming setup for sure. Now I understand there's some new products here, uh, and I haven't seen them yet. Let's see if we can take a look. So they've got all their wheels out here. Like, this is pretty cool. So like, if you wanted to come and feel what one of the Fanatec wheels feels like, you could come here and grab pretty much every single wheel. Okay, here's, so here's the new wheel here. So this is the Porsche, this is a Porsche Vision wheel. So this looks like more of a replica from the GT7 uh, Porsche Vision wheel. More authentic than the Vision GS. Those really nice Porsche wheel. I really like how this looks. Like in person, this looks really nice. The size looks right. Uh, the buttons feel, knobs feel really good. Just got these little buttons here. Nice resistance on the coders. That's really cool. Look at the case. Look at the case that this comes in. 
And then you've got, oh, we've got a new Fanatec handbrake. That looks really nice. So yeah, their Fanatec's still here strong and they're, they're launching new products, it looks like. Um, that Porsche wheel looks really cool. Definitely want to try that out. So I don't know. I think if you're if you're worried about buying Fantech for stuff right now, I think they're well positioned right now with uh, with Corsair. They've got the backing now, and they're not gonna they're not gonna let it fail. You know, it's a big brand still. There's a lot of uh, resources and people and technology here that is still very relevant, guys. So um, I think we're gonna see lots more from them next year and uh, into the maybe by the end of the year we'll see some more products, but. Yeah, that's the Fanatec area. Uh, let me just show you over here. There's like a, um, so this is, I'm gonna be spending some time here later this afternoon. And you've got the, this is the creator room here. So you can do some content in here. And they're running AC Evo in here as well. So some of the creators have been going in here and doing, um, getting their impressions of a set of Corsa Evo. Oh, we got Gamer Muscle here. Gamer Muscle. We're not, we're not. We're not live. Sim racing then. Oh, hello. Okay. Who's this gamer muscle guy? Who's he? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So all the all the familiar faces are here. Pocket three. Crew, oh, pocket everyone, three is yeah, it's killer, man. It's, it's the best. Camera, yeah. yeah, it's really good. I'm trying to do like a full tour. I have no idea how it's going to end up, but oh, yeah, go for it. You, you know, because like, yesterday I got a lay of the land. Yeah. So now I'm kind of just uh, doing this tour, and then I'm going to go back and I got to go in there later this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Try out Evo. Awesome. What, what did you think of the Evo? What was your first impressions? Oh, first impressions, I, I just uploaded the video actually, but like, um, yeah, I'm kind of mixed on it. Like, I think it's, it's better than ACC at the moment yeah. in terms of like feel and stuff and the cars are more interesting to I heard drive. It's, it brings the best of both. Yeah, I, I would say that to me, it feels like there's some kind of a bit of input delay or a little bit of uh, vagueness to okay. it. But I'm hoping that's wheel settings and I hope it's stuff they're dying out. Yeah. See? And I mean, this is just version exactly. 1.0. Exactly. Right? Like so it can only get better from here. Yeah, it's like a really yeah. early, it's like pre pre -app. It looked really pretty. <laughs> oh, yeah, it looks great. It runs it looks great pretty. as well. Yeah. That. It's not on real engine, it's their own engine. So nice. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I, I'm, awesome. I'm excited for it. I went from being like, I really hope. Yeah, I want to be, like, I'm always cautiously, I'm cautiously optimistic these days because yeah. you don't want to get your hopes up. Exactly. Um, but I, I, I I feel like they can't let this fail no. and they know how important it is so yeah i'm excited i'm going to be trying it this afternoon so All right, thanks man you. have a enjoy the show yeah. so there you go you got some celebrity uh celebrity sightings here gamer muscle videos uh really great guy really nice guy he's been going all over the place here uh so we got what do we got here sim magic we got sim magic oh sim magic's got sim magic looks like they're getting on the truck stock game Looks like they're gonna give Moza a run for their money there, eh? And what do we got here? This is the Symagic Active Pedal. Wow. I know a lot of people are gonna be excited about this. So this looks like it's like a whole unit added on top here. But it looks like it's a, it's a standalone unit. So you could probably get this by one for your brake. Uh, but this is really interesting. It doesn't look like they have one that you can actually try right now. It doesn't look like they have any rigs set up with it. Uh, but that would be really, I'm really interested in trying that. I've also got, sorry, they're showing all the different grips and paddles, haptic systems. This looks like a new haptic system here. HBR GT. So there's another really cool um, new product here from Sim Magic. It's a nice little trick. So you've got, this is called the, the mag dock. So you can take this display here. Or, so it's just, you know, clips in there and it's magnetic. And now you can run that directly on your wheelbase. But when you switch wheels, you can take that and slap that onto your wheel. That's a really cool, that's a really cool trick. I like that. I actually really like that. You know, you could have just one DDU, a couple wheels. Sim Magic guys is doing uh, really cool stuff. Here we've got, uh, I, I don't know if I ever say this right, but this is Conspit. Conspit, I guess is how you say it. I don't know, it's kind of feel like it's an unfortunate name, but um, they're uh, really here with a force. They've got a lot of really nice uh, setups here. 
Uh, looks like they've got a couple of new wheels as well, as well as wheel bases. You know, I like how small this uh, wheel base is. They brought an Aston Martin GT3 car here, but I got to show you this. I got to show you this F1 setup they have here. This is crazy. I saw this yesterday. It is not doing it. And you can buy this for $16,000. This whole, and that just gets you the screens. <laughs> Are you going to buy this, $16,000? No. Yeah, you got it? You got the money? <laughs> I don't even think this would take up my entire studio, probably, if I was going to if I was gonna have that in my, uh, in my studio. Okay, we got to go back down here. We're kind of kind of zigzagging up and down here. Okay, we've got Track Racer. Track Racer's got a nice setup here. They brought a lot of nice stuff. So they've got all their rigs. They got the Alpine uh, F1 rig. You've got a look at this F1 rig here. Uh oh, Ace Attacks just firing up the engine. So. You're definitely not going to be able to hear me. Let's let's run over there so I can show you the Ace Attack car. This is crazy. I'm not even gonna try to talk because it's just way too loud here. <laughs> and everyone goes running. Oh, we got Lawrence. Okay, it's done. <laughs> Say hi, Lawrence. Hi, Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when they fire up this Ace Attack race car, like basically, I feel bad for the other manufacturers because literally everybody just leaves their booth and runs to the Ace Attack section. Um, it's, you know, that's how I guess, that's how you bring people to your booth. You know, you bring a race car and fire up the engine. It's a pretty easy way to get attention. Um, but I mean, I think it's fantastic. I mean, people get so excited when they when they hear that car, and uh, it smells like race fuel in here right now. It's insane. I'm getting high just off the fumes. Um, but yeah, we're back at the track racer setup. Here. This is a really cool um, F1 setup rig. We got it's got uh, D box motion on it, D box motion and haptics, and it looks like they're running the track racer like an Alpine replica wheel. Let's try to go over here now. Oh, okay. So this is uh this is the new this is an evolution of the TR8. So this is a TR8 Pro V2. What do we got? Is this the TR8 no new version? Yeah, that's what. Yes. What's new about it? What? You can maybe ask. Sorry. Oh, okay. Alex. No problem. I'll talk to Alex. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk to Alex later. But yeah, this is a new uh, TR8. Guys, this uh, this rig has a really sentimental meaning to me because. The original TR8 was my first sim racing setup. That was the rig that I started on uh, in the original sim racing den. And it was a really, you know, even as a tube frame rig, I was able to attach so many different things to it. It's uh, it's a really great rig and, I, you know, they've continued to refine it. I love all the steering wheel adjustments on here, the steering wheel deck. You can make a lot of adjustments uh, as well to the pedals. You know, I, I honestly, I always say this, I think this is a really good starter rig. Uh, it's a really good starter chassis and you can be happy with that for a long time. You can mount a single monitor directly to it. They have triple monitor mounts as well. So yeah, that's Track Racer. We'll come back to Ace Attack shortly. So here we've got uh, Simify, Simify, Simufi, yeah. And uh, they've got 
bunch of different things here. They've got a few different products. I guess they're like a sim racing distributor, right? So they brought a lot of different equipment. I'm seeing a VRS, some VRS setups here, VRS wheel, uh, wheelbase and pedals. And then this one's got a Moza system running on it. It's like a R12 and the new um, CRP2 pedals on there as well. So they, they got a really nice booth here. Um, little lounge area, they've got all their products that they sell on display. They've even got a boardroom here for some meetings. Oh, they got an active pedal set up here. So they got a semi cube set up with the active pedals on the uh, Saybelt P cockpit, P99 cockpit. And some pushing belt pedals, Ace Tech wheelbase, looks like the Invicta. That's really cool. Okay, so we're gonna go up the next aisle here. I don't think we missed anything over there. So over here we've got the, um, what's this, Sim Reactor. I think this is another motion system. You know, there's like, there's so many motion system companies here, uh, smaller companies that, you know, trying to refine and do, you know, put their own spin on motion and haptics. Like, so you've got some, you know, it looks like a nice motion system. I'm not really sure. I mean, it, I don't know what the big differences are from some of the other ones. Uh, looks like they've got some pricing here. 3,000 euros for full motion. That sounds pretty good, I think, but that was to see. Okay, guys, uh, one of the stars of the show, obviously. So here's the Ace Tech race car that uh, was firing, fired up earlier, taking it inside there. Proper race car, guys. Look at the tires. It's unbelievably loud. Um, Ace Tech has a huge, they've got a huge like display here. I think it's, I mean, it's not as big as Fanatex, but they've got like a lot of stuff packed in here. You know, they've got this little uh, cart like racing set up in here. Um, there was a lot of kids in this little rig here earlier yesterday. Um, they've got all their wheels on display here. There's a big wheel wall. The new Invicta wheel here is of course the wheel uh, I just recently reviewed. Um, if you're interested in that wheel, I would go check out the review. Um, I think they did a lot of things right with it, but they just they missed a few things for me in terms of the, the shifters. I think they could have upgraded the shifters for a wheel at that price point. But yeah, check out the review. But yeah, Ace Tech as usual, uh, very, very good at doing this expo. They know how to uh, show off their equipment. They've got a whole team of people here to answer questions. Um, you know, they're here and they've got a really big presence here. They've got a really nice lounge area here as well. But look at all the setups they have here. They've got F1 setups, GT setups, and then they've got this big um, screen here just displaying, you know, some of their ads and marketing and stuff. So yeah, um, really nice. They've even got a podium here. Okay, so we're gonna move back up this aisle. So we're going back to the back of the, uh, back of the building again. And here we've got Asher Racing. And Asher Racing's got a bunch of different setups here. It's got race room, track time. I don't know if this is part of Asher Racing. This looks like a different company, but they're sharing this space with Asher Racing. So they got all their wheels on display. Um, this is the new uh, Make It Your Ultimate wheel here, basically, which is essentially the McLaren Artura Ultimate wheel, but um, basically they've, they've uh, answered all your prayers and if you are not a big fan of McLaren or you don't like having any uh, branding on your wheel, you can uh, customize your wheel with your own logo or name. Look, we've got a Boosted Media Edition here or you know, you want to put your logo on there. I don't know, maybe I need to get a, a Sim Racing Den uh, Ultimate Steering Wheel from Asher Racing put my put my logo on there. Um, they got Constantino's over here from Lovely Dashboard. He's got his little setup here uh, with uh, showing off the newest version of his dashboard. Uh, my dad and I had a really nice chat with Constantino's yesterday. Super nice guy, uh, just as I would have expected uh, to meet him in person. It's even more lovely, a lovely guy, lovely, lovely guy and lovely dashboard. And I think it's really cool that Asher Racing's got him here, part of the booth, um, showing off the integration with the Asher Racing steering wheels and lovely dashboard. And look, they brought a full McLaren Artura. So this is the, you know, this is the real McLaren Arturo wheel in here. And you can see how close that is to, um, you know, the McLaren Arturo lineup of wheels, right? So I actually have the Arturo Pro, which uh, I love that wheel. You know, I, I gave these wheels really positive reviews because they're, 
They're really fantastic wheels. They're really well made. So that's Asher Racing. I just wanted to say hi. There he is, the legend. <laughs> nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet, nice to meet you, sir. Pleasure. And with Constantinos, good to see you, man. Great to see the Sim Hub guys here. Amazing. Hello. Thank you. Incredible guys, you know, like these are some people that uh, they're kind of celebrities. You know, we call them celebrities in our community, but you know, they're just normal uh, people, obviously, but very smart, very intelligent, doing extremely amazing things and making tools for sim racing that uh, just make our experience better. So uh, that's really cool to see. Uh, everybody's here, guys, this year. Everybody is at this show right now if they're involved in the community from creators. Uh, so yeah, it's really cool to see. I know we're moving quickly, guys, but it's uh, it's a big place and I I don't want this video to be too long, but I think we'll we'll probably go over an hour. And of course, here we've got SimiCube. SimiCube is like right in the center of everything. They're right in the middle, the heart of the show, basically, so to speak. You know, SimiCube is no stranger to doing these expos. Um, they're here, obviously, with the Active Pedal Pro, which everyone is really uh, lined up to try. And if they have, you know, a lot of people haven't even tried the Active Pedal in general. So to be able to try the Active Pedal Pro here, see here they got a two pedal setup i actually I, so i have an active pedal pro at home now it just got shipped to me for review um, but i had a chance to actually uh spend like 15 minutes on this rig over here and try it out you know what for me it feels honestly it feels exactly the same as the ultimate uh which is the previous active pedal which is it's a good thing hi sonia how are you <laughs> there's sonia from SimiCube um who deals with all the creators she's super nice and super uh, organized and she helps get me a lot of the review units and make sure they get sent to my house safely um so yeah the the active pedal pro is obviously really popular i mean look if it's it's as good as the ultimate they've got a little few sacrifices but at a lower price point i mean you can't really go wrong with that um like I said, unless you're that type of person or a pro driver who needs the full capability of the brake force, I think the Active Pedal Pro is probably for 90% uh, of the people out there, honestly. But um, yeah, I'm gonna be doing a full review. So that's just you know my first impressions from trying it out yesterday. Uh, they got all their products on display here. So yeah, uh, look out for my full review of the Active Pedal Pro. It'll probably be a, a few weeks till I get back uh, to, get that, uh, to get that put together. So on the other side here, just beside uh, SimiCube, you've got uh, SRS. This is uh, the SimRay shop. So this is a, you know, I know this is a very popular European distributor. Um, I've never really bought anything from them because uh, in Canada, it's not super, you know, not the best option, but yeah, you can actually come here, you can buy stuff. They've got sim racing gloves, t-shirts, they've got, you know, flag units, they've got, you can buy wheels, all the different wheels here. So yeah, if you're if you're local to the area or Europe, you can come here, you can buy stuff and touch and feel it and then go buy the same wheel. So I think that's what the amazing part is because like really there's nowhere else where you can try all these things and um, and then make a purchase, right? It's, it's amazing to have everything in one place. That's the hardest part about buying sim racing equipment is that you're not able to try it uh, before you buy it and I know you guys rely on reviews from myself and my colleagues so but yeah this is the place like if you're shopping for a sim racing setup you know coming to the show even for for me like to come from Canada it's a long way but I mean if you wanted to make a vacation out of it if you're from the U.S. or Canada and you're thinking about buying a sim racing setup and you're about to invest a lot of money I don't know maybe invest the money come on a trip come out here and try everything in one place go home and know exactly uh, what you enjoyed using. So it's it's overwhelming though, how many options there are right now. So this is uh, SimCore here. SimCore, uh, there's George from SimCore. Super nice guy. He flew 28 hours from Australia to be here, but um, I don't think a lot of people are, are uh, you know, unfamiliar with SimCore. They make amazing accessories. I've called SimCore Sim Racing Jewelry before, which I still need to patent that saying, but you know, they make all these little useful accessories that, you know, just enhance and make your rig easier and more compatible um, to be able to do a lot of cross compatibility with equipment in terms of wheel hubs for quick releases, extensions if you need that for comfort. Um, but he's brought some unique things here. This is a, um, a wheel deck that basically goes uh, up and down. 
you can see it's like kind of on a, a pivot system here. And this is really cool. And then he's got the uh, the Lev 1 system mount for the DDU, which I have. This is a great system. It's, uh, you know, you can add all these different pieces and then make adjustments to your DDU. So that is really cool. Okay, so moving along. So here we've got Logitech. Logitech also has a very big booth in the center. They have a huge presence here. Uh, they've also got a bunch of play seat setups as well. And they've got all their wheels on display. Looks like they're doing some, you know, live racing here. They've got people on the rigs and uh, they're doing some racing together here. Uh, but here we've got actually, I believe they've got a set of course at Evo over here running. Yes. So this is obviously the pre-alpha version of um, a set of course at Evo. We're gonna go to the other screen here. I'll show you another view of it. So a lot of the exhibitors here have, you know, a version of a set of course at Evo. Um, you can try it on a lot of different equipment. Um, you know, obviously it's a pre-alpha version, but from what I understand, it's, it's running pretty good. They've had some issues, obviously, but I mean, that's to be expected with a, a pre-release version. But I think it's incredible to have this here at the show. Um, this is something that I think, you know, to have new software ahead of time to be able to try it here um, before you maybe potentially order this. But obviously this is pre-release, but what I've seen and heard, it's very good. I'm gonna be trying it uh, later today. So I may have uh, already released my impressions on that or after this video, but. Um, yeah, there's people lined up to try um, set a course at Evo. So that's the Logitech booth. Let's look at all their different wheels here. So they got a huge wall of wheels. This looks bigger than my wall of wheels at home. <laughs> so they've got all these different wheel rims here, some Momo rims. That's a really cool display. That's a big collection of wheels. So we've got uh, the Logitech G. Nice foldable cockpit here. Okay, moving on, moving on. Oh, we got more Logitech stuff here at the back. So this looks like um, we've got, a, got some cool setups here to kind of show you, you know, a little office setup here. And then it looks like they're running like some tournaments here, some racing. There's actually prizes and stuff here. You can sign up, sign up to race here. But Sulio and random call sign here. Some more, some more celebrity sightings here. Maybe we'll try to talk to him later. <laughs> Yeah, that's Logitech. Okay, uh, you've probably seen this rig before. This is the uh, M-SIM rig. Another, probably one of the most beautiful um, sim racing rigs I've seen. You know, it's running, it looks like it's running a Semicube 2 Pro wheelbase. Uh, I'm not sure about the pedals that are on there, uh, but it's got some butt kicker units as well and a D-Box motion system. Um, there's even lighting in the front. I don't know if it's on, yeah, it's on. So you've got some lights and stuff in front. I mean, this is, again, another beautiful custom rig. You know, these things are very expensive, but if you have the money and you just want a turnkey setup that looks beautiful in your house or maybe commercial setup, that is M-SIM. We've got some other rigs here, like some Lamborghini theme type rigs. This rig looks really nice. And they're also playing set of course at Evo there. Okay, so here we have, um, this is like another eSports, basically an eSports area. Uh, and it looks like anyone can actually come in here and sign up and um, 
do some racing, you have to pre-register, but uh, you know they've got cameras on you, streaming you live as you're racing. Looks like they're playing iRacing right now. Um, but yeah, you can jump in here and race some people here at the show. So yeah, this is not just look at equipment, this is interactive place. Uh, got some, uh, some other games set up here, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so now we're kind of uh, going to the middle. So we're almost halfway through the tour, guys. Like that's just, we're only 50% and you've already seen how much is here. This is the main stage, so from time to time, yeah, there's different speakers and things going up here. They're, they're doing some awards here, some trophies for uh, some of the winners of some of the uh, competitions that have been going on. So there's a full, full stage here, which is really cool. And then over here, we've got SimLab. So SimLab brought, really surprised us all, I guess, last week or earlier the week before, with the announcement that they are coming out with their own wheelbase. And they have made a bold, bold claim that it is going to be the best wheelbase on the market, which is an incredible claim. But um, they've been working with some uh, people in the motor development area of things, and they are really confident in what they have and what they're bringing here. So we definitely want to give this a shot later today. But they do. So this rig is, has the... Uh, the SimLab once set up here. It's kind of like hidden. I don't know, like it's, this is not even a close to a final production unit. This is like a early unit. Um, but I'm told that it's it's in a good state right now, but it's they're looking for feedback, obviously at the show from different creators and people using this. Uh, so it's, you know, we'll, we don't know when this is coming out. We don't know what the price is. We don't know what the, you know, torque output rates are. We don't know what the full, um, we don't have any full details really. It's just really early days, but I think it's pretty amazing that they have this here at the show. And you've got a lot of the grid wheels on here as well as the new uh, Mercedes AMG F wheel, a one wheel that I reviewed earlier as well. So yeah, that's uh, SimLab. Like I said, they just have a very little sort of section here with a couple of rigs. Like it's not a full booth, but I think they just wanted to be able to give people the experience to try out some of their products here. Uh, so they've, you know, they've got a lot of different things here and and on their cockpits. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna go back and try that wheelbase later. Uh, Camus, Camus is here with all their hardware. And they're partnered here with Race Sim for this booth, uh, with the Race Sim cockpits and uh, Camus hardware uh, pedal and wheels. They even have one of their little uh, go karts, electric go karts here, hooked up to uh, the uh, the Camus wheel. So they've got kids and stuff in there, so it's really cool. There's actually a lot of stuff for for kids here, like a lot of rigs that are set up for little kids, which is which is really amazing to see. And then you've got uh, this is the Thrustmaster area. It's kind of all it's kind of all sectioned off. There's Mark from Advance. What's up? And then you've got uh, so this Thrustmaster area is kind of like secretive. It's it's all blacked out. You can't you have to get an appointment to go in there and try the the T598. Now I don't know if I'm going to go in there later or not. The reason being is I actually have a T598 that just arrived at home for me. So uh, rather than kind of try it here, I'd rather try it in the comfort of my studio and be able to get um, you know, more time with it and be able to experience it on my setup and where I'm comfortable. A lot of times when I try setups here, like, you know, I'm a taller, bigger guy and some of these setups are just not set up for me. And so I find that I don't test hardware in, in the best scenario, which, you know, kind of will change how I feel about it potentially. So I want to try it in a seating position that I'm comfortable with and, and can handle it. So yeah, I'll do that. I'll be filming that at home as I do the review. Now, um, this is one of my favorite sim racing companies right now. This is Bavarian SimTech. Now, I didn't have very much exposure to Bavarian um, until recently. They sent me their Alpha Wheel review. This is the new Alpha Wheel here. Sorry. <laughs> this is the new Alpha Wheel. Um, I'm almost through my review of this and we're gonna be start to finalize and putting that together when I get back from the trip. But I'm gonna give you a bit of a spoiler alert. This is a fantastic, fantastic wheel. And I'm gonna go into that on more detail in my review, but um, yeah, the grips on this wheel are 
probably the best I've ever put my hands on. Um, and I know that's a bold statement, but it's 100% true. And so they've got a full, I mean, Bavarian actually has a really nice booth. It's very minimal, very in, touch, in, in line with their design language, which I really like their designs. I think they're extremely nice, extremely detailed. And so they've got their two wheels here, the Alpha, which is, you know, the rec was recently released. And then you've got now the new wheel that they brought here is the Pro V2. So this is an evolution of the existing Pro. And they've also told me though that this version that's here is actually not gonna be the final version. They're still refining this, but they wanted to have, you know, sort of the first version here at the show. But they said they're gonna make a few changes on this wheel uh, before it goes into final production and release. But it, they basically said they took all the best things of the Pro and just basically improved on that. So um, yeah, and they, they said that they'll probably send me one for review. So um, I'll be able to review that uh, at some point in the future. But so they partner with Trek here for this booth. So Trek is running, uh, providing all the cockpits, chassis here for the Bavarian Simtech um, equipment. Um, they're running a couple of wheelba different wheelbases here, Fanatec wheelbase and the Asatec Invicta. Um, yeah, so that's an alpha wheel. Here's the guys from Bavarian. Say hello. <laughs> Hi. How are you? I'm doing a I'm doing a tour of the yeah, entire show. Nice, nice. Yeah, so I'm just walking them through uh, the Bavarian booth here. You want to walk them through uh, some stuff? Um, I'll just I'll go around. I don't know, what I don't know if my mic is gonna pick up. Yeah. So let's just let's try. I can't talk. I can't talk too loud because my voice is already. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll uh, I'll walk them through some stuff. You, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm just kind of doing a quick tour, showing I everything. You know any, anything. I know everything now. I, I'm an expert. I I think they offered me a job the other day here. I know so much now. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So this was a, a surprise to me as well. This is the um, their new control center. So this is a uh, button box, fully uh, RGB lit telemetry based, so obviously some familiarity to the um, Precision Sim Engineering Pro Switch panel, but we've seen a lot of button boxes this style now. But what I like about this one is the size, so it's a little bit bigger. Um, you've got, looks like more buttons. Um, the layout is great. The buttons have a amazing uh, clicky feel, like they feel really good. Uh, I can tell you actually right off the bat, they feel better than the PSP Pro Switch panel. But what's cool about that is you've also got two rotary encoders down here as well which I know the PSP does have that as well, but what's different is these are multi-selectors, so I can change the function here, and that will then change uh, you know, the buttons up here as well. So you could, I mean, you're gonna have, be able to have more inputs here, um, but I just love the lighting on this. I love how this, everything is lit up down here. Um, guys, I really want this on my rig. Like, I mean, I, it's, reviewing button boxes is pretty simple. I, it, I don't know if I would ever do a full review on something like this, maybe um but like it's one of those things that at a show like this where you come up and you try this as long as this works well i mean this is a no-brainer for me really i mean this looks like a much uh, a nice upgrade from the psp um, i like how it looks i like how it works um and it would be a great pairing to a bavarian wheel um the other cool thing they have here is they a lot of people got excited about this but i feel like i've seen these before but um, I don't know about you, but I have I always struggle with where to put my phone on my SIM rig. So when you put this in here, it just basically, uh, let's try it again. It just basically clamps onto your phone and then you just touch here and it releases your phone. So yeah, pretty cool thing. And it's, you know, you've got one of those adjustable pivots on there as well to mount that to your rig. So I don't know, I'm definitely gonna pick one of those up. There was a guy here that insisted on that he needed to buy it right away. And they said, we don't actually have any here for sale. He said, I wanna buy this one on display. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's one of those things you see and you're like, yeah, done, sold, I want that. Um, I'm probably gonna buy one, honestly, to charge my phone on my rig. I think it's worth it. Um, but yeah, they got the control center set up here, like I said, so machined aluminum, scratch resistant tempered glass, custom injected caps, and it comes with this, um, this adjustable mounting arm here, right? So you can basically, if you untighten that, you can move, you know, move this around to uh, get this where you want it. So yeah, this is really cool. I think that was like, you know, one of my, probably one of my favorite things I saw actually this uh, at the show so far, just, you know, it's a nice, uh, very nice button box. And you know, uh, Daniel Newman's gonna have his eyes on that for creating some profiles. That It feels like that device is literally made for DNR racing. I know he's looking at this at home going, what can I do with this? So hopefully they get something going. You know, they're already uh, partnered with the Alpha Wheel. So uh, I would be very surprised if we did not see a DNR profile in the future for that Bavarian SimTech 
control center button box. So here we are at Sabelt or Sabelt, however you want to say it. Um, they've got a really nice booth, really clean looking, nice booth. Um, they've got all their rigs on display here and seats. Um, they introduced at the, just before the show some different color schemes for the existing seats. So not a change to the seat, but you can now order uh, this sort of color configuration here uh, with the, the combination of the black and the blue. So um, yeah, actually I've been, I wanted to, I've been looking forward to seeing them at the show because I wanted to try the seats. A lot of people say they're really comfortable. Uh, unfortunately, some of the seats were a little too small for me. Um, I don't know if there's going to be like sort of larger versions, but like I said, as, because I'm a bigger guy, you know, obviously some of these racing seats can be really tight. Like at home, I use an OMP uh, HTER, but I use the XL version, which gives me a little bit more space and comfort. But um, actually the formula wheel, uh, sorry, the formula seat I sat in, uh, I had no problems with. It was actually really comfortable. I could have probably taken a nap there, honestly. Like it was really comfortable and it's such a great uh, to drive formula in that position is amazing like part of me really wants to build a dedicated formula rig in my studio just for formula racing uh pair it with a really nice wheel so yeah and they, they're running um looks like they're running some solpec wheels on here as well which we're gonna go we're gonna get to solpec eventually as well okay moving along we're gonna go back this way. I, I just came back to Sabelt because I kind of went the wrong way there, so I didn't want to miss them. Um, so we've got here Cube Controls. So Cube Controls brought a new wheel. They brought a new Mercedes wheel, actually. Um, now you may have seen the, the previous Mercedes wheel that I personally um, think is too big. Um, it's a very big wheel. It's very wide. But this is the, the new Mercedes wheel here that this gentleman's holding. Um, We'll get a better view at that after, but they brought a Mercedes GT3 car here as well. I think they actually have one of the drivers here from that car. Yeah, so that's this is the the previous Mercedes wheel, which I think is just it's it's very big wheel. I just personally don't like the size of it. So this is the new one here. Let's see if we can get a better view of it. Show you on the rig here. if I can find one that's uh, on display here we can use. Uh, I don't see it. Okay, so we'll we'll have to come back to Cube Controls later and I'll show you this new Mercedes wheel. Uh, but it's really it's really nice actually. The only thing I don't like about it is the grips on it were really, felt really thin to me. Uh, it just didn't feel right in my hand, but it's one of those things like first impressions are one thing, but when you get home and you're comfortable and you, you spend a significant amount of time with these wheels, you, your, my opinions start to change. Um, you, you know, that's the thing with wheels is you really need to go through the learning period with it, uh, the, the adjustment of a different wheel and different style, and then you can start to really understand um, if it's the right wheel for you. Um, so we've got GSI, Gomez Sim Industries. Um, they always have a big, big presence at, at these shows and they're really popular. You know, I feel like GSI is one of those companies that has a bit of a cult following. You know, they have a specific design language and look and feel to their wheels that um, a lot of people appreciate and um, I, I, I agree with them. I think I, I love their wheels. I think they're fantastic. You know, some are, are better than others and they, it's almost like they have a, not that they're better than others, that they have different styles, right? Every, to, to suit everybody. So some people like the Hyper P1 grips, the big thick grips, some people hate them. Uh, so there's other wheels, they have other options. They have the new FEP, FP2, they have the new GXL V2 here. Um, this is the GXL V2 here. Um, I held it and I really like the grips on it. And you've got the trademark GSI, you know, the signature GSI paddles, which I think are really great shifter paddles. Um, so yeah, GSI guys, is X29. Fantastic wheels and they've been really popular here at the show. Okay, so we're moving along still. We've got a sim racing glove company here, it looks like. And we've got uh, race room. So race room's got a booth. They got two race cars with some sim rigs set up. And they've actually got a, uh, looks like they got a Porsche GT3 race car here as well. That is amazing. 
So yeah, that's race room. What do we got next? Okay, so up next we have uh, Sim Rep Engineering. And uh, so these guys have a new, this is the P911. So this is like a Porsche RSR sort of, not an official replica, but obviously an inspired wheel. It looks a lot like the grid RSR. They also have this Cosworth uh, replica wheel is here as well on the, uh, this Eau Rouge. I've seen this Eau Rouge cockpit actually uh, all over the show, uh, Simicube has a, a, ver a cop version of this cockpit as well. It's it's kind of cool. It has a, it's kind of like an LMP style dash, uh, but it's got this top part here. Uh, so yeah, it looks really cool. Like it lines up nicely with the dash in the game, and you're you're in a more sort of Formula LMP style uh, seating position with this seat. So I really like this cockpit actually. It's just it's hard to get in and out of sometimes, but it, it is really cool. Uh, so we're moving on now, we're almost near the end here, maybe 80%, like you can just see how much stuff is here and I mean I'm, I'm flying through this right now. Um, but so this was one of the first booths that I came to on Friday uh, to speak with Manny and Mike from VPG Sim and they're also here with um, their motion uh, rig turnkey partner here as well. Which is Novis. So Novis has these uh, full turnkey setups, and uh, they're running. Yes. Oh, who's this guy? Oh, sorry. Is this security? Yeah, security. Security. <laughs> so get out, get out. this is Manny from uh, from VPG Sim. Yeah, there you go. Hi, people. So I was just explaining. I'm doing a tour, not live, but I'm recording a tour, and I was just explaining Novis and VPG Sim. So I, you, if you guys have maybe seen my review, make sure you go check it out of the uh, VPGT, which is right here, right? Um, one of my favorite wheels I reviewed this year, super lightweight and amazing wheel. So go check out that review. Uh, but if you're, you know, anyone at the show was able to try this wheel as well as, we have the new Mustang GT3 wheel here, right? I'll, I'll show you. Is it on the rig right now? Please. Yeah. It's on the rig right now, see if I can get a view, yeah. So this is the new Mustang GT3 wheel. Almost identical to the real wheel. Uh, super lightweight wheel. I'll show you, I'll show you. Okay. It's a amazing wheel to drive with. It really is, like, the, the difference of these lightweight wheels, like, what, what it, tell us, that why are lightweight wheels so important, Manny? Well, the thing is, it's not just lightweight, it's lightweight and stiffener. Yeah. So a lot of people associate lightweight to plastic wheel. It's yeah. Oh, lightweight feels cheap. In reality, lightweight carbon fiber wheels, they're super stiff, no flex at all, and they're super light, which yeah. is what you want because you've got low inertia, so that means you can control the car a lot better, faster response, correct it a lot better, feel a lot better. Yeah. So it's a win-win. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're beautiful wheels, guys. Uh, you do the flex test. Yeah, there's no flex. There's no, no flex. flex test. No flex test. <laughs> passed. You don't. It's passed already. The flex test. I've got the wrong key. It's locked. So, because people are gonna definitely want to steal this wheel. I would. <laughs> they want to steal these ones. These are the real ones here. Very expensive. This is a real, uh, this is the real Porsche 911 GT3R uh, two uh, wheel, as well as the Mustang wheel, and you've got the Porsche Cup 992 Cup car wheel. Really cool to see these here. You know, this is the type of thing that you get at the show. You see things that you don't normally see, uh, and. I was actually able to, uh, Manny actually let me race with that cup wheel. He let me race on the sim with that cup wheel. Uh, he, they kept an eye on me though. They were, I think they were scared that I was gonna, that I was gonna run off with that wheel. 
but uh, yeah, it's incredible to drive with, incredibly lightweight. Um, it's funny though, with these, a lot of these real, uh, um, real race car steering wheels, um, I would say like sim racers were a little bit picky, but these wheels in the real race car, they have, they have play in the paddles, they have play in the buttons, you know, they're not perfect. And because the real race car drivers don't care. They want it to be lightweight, they want it to work, they want the paddles to work. Uh, even like sometimes in real cars, the QRs are loose. So th these things are not as important to real drivers. I know sim racers were picky, partly because we spend hard earned money on, uh, on our setups, but you know, it's interesting to see the differences, but this is uh, this is just a little bit demo of the Novus uh, cockpit here. So it has a pivoting. I really like this uh, system for the wheel deck. It basically pivots. It's very easy to adjust, and you can get the exact angle that you want for your setup. So if you want to go with a more Formula setup, you can go straight like this, or if you want to go in a more GT position, you can basically put uh, the wheel up like this. Um, but yeah, I really like this. It's a full uh, one-piece cockpit here. Uh, really nice stuff from uh, from Novus, and so they also have brought uh, Mustang GTD here as well. Uh, let's just go back in here for a second. Oh, we got some celebrities here. We got Race Beyond Matter. Jillian, how are you, sir? <laughs> how are you? Mr. I got to meet him. I got the pleasure of meeting him okay. coming in. It's uh, we're just saying how crazy the show is, right? Like so many people here, right? It's never been better, guys. Really? Is, is this the best year? Yes. You've been to a lot of them. All of them. He's right? been to all of them. All of them. He's the OG. So, <laughs> this is the founder, yeah. He founded it actually, yes. How old are you, man? <laughs> I'm not going to pass a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we, we were just talking this morning how crazy it is and how uh, amazing it's been meeting the community and everything. So, yeah. One of the most beautiful parts. Yeah, beautiful guy. Good guy, Manny here, eh? He's a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Take care, enjoy the show guys. Talk to you later. So you never know. You never know who you're gonna meet at the Sim Expo, guys. You know, all the creators are here that you that you love, that I love. These are guys I follow and, and watch. Okay, yeah, let's go see it. Let me get the key. Okay. So yeah, you guys, you know, you never know who you're going to see at the show. You're going to see some creators and people you know, and everyone's super friendly and willing to say hi and, and spend some time talking with you. But um, that's the beauty of the show. I mean, for me, it's been amazing to meet some of these colleagues of mine. Uh, I still have to pinch myself that I'm here because I'm very new to this community. But yeah, so well, we're going to take a look at the Mustang here. I'm going to go around. We're going to go for a ride, Manny? <laughs> look at this. Wow. So this is the new, uh, this is the Dark Horse, Mustang Dark Horse. Wow. That is incredible. So there's like a full, a full display in here. Uh, it's really comfortable in here. It's nice and quiet in here actually. Now you can probably hear me much better on the uh, audio recording. Um, what are you looking for? No, start the car, not the engine. You just want to start the car? Yeah, that one. But okay. Does, does it start the he said, "I'm not allowed to start the engine." <laughs> Can you imagine? Why is Ace Attack allowed to start the engine? No, we'll do that on Sunday. <laughs> Only on Sunday. Yeah. Sunday <laughs> so let's take a look at the engine in this beast here. Wow, 5.0. That's incredible. Incredible, incredible stuff. Okay, Manny. Thanks, man. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, and then we got MME Sim Sport here. Uh, these guys uh, brought their new uh, H Plus sequential shifter here. Um, this is one of the nicest shifters that I've tried. Like the shifting action, it's so satisfying. Like I could literally sit in my rig and just do this. Like it's just super solid shifter. And then you've got their uh, sequential shifter here, which is really nice shifter. It's got a good throw to it. And then you've got their um, handbrake here, which is like really nice handbrake. These are really nice products, uh, really nice products. I like that they all black here. I, before they used to come in blue, I believe, but they have this all black version. Like 
I don't know. I would I would put the shifter on my rig. Like I mean, just using feeling it. Like I'm pretty much sold on that. So that's that's MME Simsport. Um, over here, you got a cafeteria area, which is pretty nice. So here we have uh, our seat. So this is another uh, chassis rig maker here, uh, as well as seats. So they've got this formula rig. So they've got this really nice. Um, mounting system here for with the cutout of the logo here and it's nice mounting system for a single monitor um, you can get different colors as well here um, they look really nice I mean I don't know what the thickness of the, the profiles are but but um, yeah they're really really nice cockpits show you an orange one here Got a nice orange one here with a D-Box system on there, so that's really nice. And just they've got some sim magic here over there, but yeah, that's our seat. I don't know, I've lost track of how many different cockpit chassis manufacturers are here, um, but there's quite a few. There's quite a few. Like if you're if you're shopping for a rig or a chassis, this this is the best place to come and actually sit in them, see what it's like. Um, you know, obviously, like when you get these things home and you start to make the adjustments that you need to on your rig, um, it's, then it becomes you know easier. But obviously, it's really cool to come here and see them. So um, th this little section here, uh, I say little, but it's pretty big. Um, this is um, P1 Sim, as well as they've partnered here with D-Box for this immersive racing experience. Um, I'm gonna see if I can show you this quickly. I actually tried this yesterday. My dad and I went in this immersive racing experience. Um, let's just see if we can film in here don't know if they're gonna let me do that or not. Okay, we're gonna to have to come back here, but I'm gonna to try to describe it to you a little bit. So it's, there's a giant projection screen in there, and then they have a formula seating set up, a rig in the center, but, but then behind you, you have basically like a theater seating. And so what you do, it's kind of weird, is you have, um, you're driving, one person's driving, as the other people are sitting all around you. Like, I think like 10 people can fit in there behind you. And as you turn, their seats move at the same time your seat does. When you brake, their seat goes forward. So you can take people on a ride with you. Um, I, took, I took a bunch of people on a hot lap around Spa. Uh, the first lap was a little rocky. Uh, I didn't do too well. I, I think I made some people dizzy, but then the second lap, I killed it. I was like hitting every corner and they were cheering me on and so it's kind of cool it's sort of like a it's like going to a movie but you're the star of the movie in the racing movie and you've got your crowd behind you cheering you on I gotta see if I can show you this uh, let me ask these guys you mind if I just show what's on here on camera quickly two seconds or is it there in a session right now I'll come back later okay we'll, yeah yeah we'll come back later and show, show our viewers so yeah it's uh, they don't want to let you in there because they don't want to break the immersion um, if you open up the open up the, the uh, drapes there. So, anyways, we'll come back. I'm, I'm gonna probably have some videos on that later that I'll add into this um, that I took that we took yesterday. So, um, P1 Sim has um, some chassis set up here. They also have make wheels as well. So this is a P1 wheel as well here, and it's like a, a Peugeot experience. So P1 Sim, this is a French company. So you know they've got the, all the Peugeot prototype cars that they're in and, and a lot of their wheels are similar to the, the wheels in those cars so yeah this is a French sim racing company and some nice products here but I've never really spent a lot of time with them or reviewed them so I don't know too much about them but um, yeah everybody's here uh, here we've got the top speed center so this is I guess a, a sim racing center uh, I'm not sure where they are they're in Germany and so a lot of what's nice about these setups is they're they're made for for kids or, or you know smaller children you know they're adjustable you can adjust the the pedal distance on here so they're it's a little more user friendly for kids which is really cool to see because um, you know I think getting uh, kids involved in sim racing early can be a really fun and exciting hobby and uh, yeah so and there's definitely a lot of interest from um, the younger generation right now in sim racing so I think we need to make some products to help cater to them so okay we're gonna walk down here okay so over here we've got uh, Paget racing not sure what these guys are I think they're okay so they make they make auto parts they make uh, potentially racing parts but brakes oil you know street performance type parts uh, they're just here you know advertising and uh, marketing their products but they've got a pretty pretty cool motion system here set up uh, trip big triple monitor screens 
Um, looks like a pretty cool setup with a traction loss system as well. And they've got this uh, Golf R here, all blacked out. I really like the, like the new Golf R, really nice car. Look at that, all blacked out. So that's Paget Racing. And we're back, see we're back at the back here. We saw the stage earlier. And this is really, uh, really cool to see here. You've got a uh, women's arena. So this is uh, to, to promoting and uh, trying to get more women involved in sim racing, which I think is a fantastic thing. I would love to see more women in sim racing and see the, the, the change. You know, it's obviously, it's one of those things even like in real life motorsports, uh, very much a male dominated uh, place, but I think you know, um, we're seeing more women in sim racing. I think it's fantastic. I love that they've got this arena here um, to support that and get people excited and encouraged. So awesome to see. Um, at the back here, I don't know what this is here. There's some sort of sim racing competition, I think, going on here. Um, Ren Welton, I'm not sure what they do, but but what I do know they've done is they brought a McLaren 720S race car and they're letting people sit in it. They're actually letting people sit in it. Look at that. So you can sit in there and get your picture taken with it. Like, there's not many places you can uh, you can go where you can sit in a race car. Um, so these guys are, I guess, like a, I don't know, racing club or something, or maybe a sim racing center. I'm not sure. I'll I'll look I'll look it up. Uh, but they've also brought look they brought another car, got an Audi R8 here, uh, with a full racing seat roll cage in there. So very cool. And then we've got VRS Racing here, and they've got their products and wheels on display. You know, it's a small booth, but they've, you know, they've got a couple of their rigs set up here to show their products. It's really cool. VRS Racing. And we've got a uh, Maxmore Technology Group, so these guys make uh, parts here for sim racing. So it looks like they make a lot of the um, technology actually that goes in direct drive. So like this is basically a, a direct drive system sort of broken down here. So that's kind of cool. Um, let me come back here and learn a little bit more about how these direct drive systems work. So we're, we're almost at the end guys here. It's, uh, I think we're at a full hour almost here. I'm not too sure, but I gotta show you, I gotta show you this. I'm saving some of the coolest things for last year, but um, this is actually a school or like a university college uh, for mechanical, technical training. And their students built this rig and it's got a full Porsche Taycan, Taycan dash basically that's been converted for, sip, for some, I'm just gonna move over here for a second because one of the guys is talking, but it's been converted to a sim racing setup and they're using the cubic system motion platform here. And you can see they've got a full dash there on there. Sorry guys. And um, they've also got a uh, one of their um, cars here. So like when you're part of the school, the, like this is your, your project, you're working on this race car. It's similar to another um, technology uh, school. I can't think of the name right now where it's like a program you go into in your whole class. His job is to build one of these cars. Everyone has a different role to play in engineering and creating a race car. So I, I wish I had done this when I was younger, honestly, I probably would have paid way more attention in school, but um, I think it's fantastic to see. And, and you know, people that are within in this same kind of technology, there's a future probably in sim racing, maybe working for one of a sim racing manufacturing company, if you're able to build uh, these things. So let's just get a better view of this. Um, so actually, I think I have a, a video of this from yesterday. I'll, I'll throw in here of that, that rig. I mean, that was, it's, it's funny, that was one of the highlights for me was that, and you wouldn't expect that from a uh, school uh, with that racing setup. Um, over here, we've got Case King, uh, which is a sim racing shop, and they have a like huge like lit up booth here, um, sort of on the far side. And they've got a lot of different setups here, as you can see. So these guys are like a uh, e-racing e -racing club as well. So they got some really um, nice computers here, even. Very cool. And then we have a helicopter here. Why do we have a helicopter here? Do you think it's a flight sim helicopter? No, it's not. I thought that's what I first thought that you could go in here and play Microsoft Flight Simulator, but it's not. This is the, uh, understand it's the German military here just promoting um, what they do, maybe recruiting people <laughs> to the mil military, but they're showing off this helicopter and you can sit inside of it as well uh, and actually move the uh, joystick there. How cool is that? 
uh, they got the you know the engine opened up. So yeah, you never know what you're gonna see at the Sim Racing Expo. The German military is here with a helicopter. All right, uh, moving along, moving along. Okay, so Cooler Master is uh, kind of a new name, I guess, in sim racing. You know, they're starting to get into, they're known as a computer part builder, obviously uh, PC gaming parts, but they have a uh, motion rig here now, um, which looks like they're using someone else's um, actuators, but with their name on it, but they're, you know, they're basically uh, coming out with this uh, cockpits as well. So you can see they have some of their um, racing cockpits here. They're, they're tube frame cockpits, which, you know, I think are, are great, but it's uh, not as much versatility maybe as aluminum profile, but uh, they have some really nice looking rigs that do have, look like they have quite of a bit of adjustability in terms of the pedal deck and the wheel deck. So um, that's really cool to see. So, and then uh, we have the Potato Nation booth here. This is really amazing. You know, you guys will know Lawrence de Souza, and they brought uh, Kales Cole's racing car here. Uh, Lawrence has done a lot, and Potato Nation have, are supporting real racers. So they support a number of different real racers here as well. And um, I've been donating to this as well as I purchased one of uh, Lawrence's uh, sim racing books. Hi guys. Hi. Say hello to everyone. Hello. <laughs> I was, where's Lawrence? Where's Lawrence? Is he here? Did we lose him? He's galvanizing around around the expo. Yeah, Potato Nation is here strong. I love it. They're strong. These guys are they have a presence. 20 odd people here, guys. Potato Nation is a. Have their own shirt. Yes, they're a huge. They have a huge representation here. They bring a lot of passion and fun, and they've got their own booth. Yeah, there's more. Yeah. Look at there's more, more potatoes. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Hey guys. Hey guys. So I bought, yeah, I bought two copies of Lawrence's book. He signed it for me, and they've got whiskey tasting going on back here. They got swag. So yeah, guys, it's amazing, you know. Uh, to see a, a sim racing community booth here at the Sim Racing Expo. Just incredible. Um, you never know what you're gonna find here. Okay guys, so uh, that wraps up the tour. Um, I really hope that, that the audio and the video, everything came out okay. This is kind of my first experience um, in this kind of setting with, uh, with some new equipment. Um, so it's always kind of touch and go the first time around, but um, I really just wanted to capture a raw tour um, just to kind of give you a feel for what it's like to be here. I know many of you may not get the opportunity maybe ever to come to a show like this in Germany. I mean, it is very far out of reach. I mean, it was a big undertaking, big trip, big investment for myself and my father to take here. Um, but I feel like it was well worth it. I mean, I just have enjoyed being a part of this. It's 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 truly insane to uh, to be here. Uh, kind of had to pinch myself, honestly. I know it's, it's just sim racing, but uh, when you see and you're, uh, you hear about all these things, they actually be here is really cool. And I think the best part about it has been meeting some amazing people, um, kind of getting the stories behind these companies and the products and development um, and getting the personal side of things. Um, but also just a kid in a, in a candy store with all the hardware that's here. I mean, uh, I mean, obviously I have the privilege to test and, and I've seen and I've used a lot of the hardware that's here right now um, before some of the people here have tried it but it's, there's still a lot of new stuff here. There's still things that I see that I missed before, didn't know about or you know knew about but hadn't been able to use, like the Solpec wheels. I, I was well aware of them, but I've never used one. Uh, so you know things like that where you actually get to put your hands on things. So um, yeah, I mean, if you're able to get to a show, uh, this I was told this is the biggest turnout, this is the biggest show ever for the 10 year anniversary. They expect that the show is gonna continue to grow um, you know, I've heard that they might outgrow this place. I don't know if that's a fact, but I mean, it's packed here right now. They are almost full capacity in terms of exhibitors. So uh, I would say it's a huge successful show. Uh, everyone I've talked to is uh, excited, having a great time. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tour. I hope you're all doing well. And uh, until the next one, stay safe, enjoy your racing.